hey everyone welcome back to my channel so some of you guys asked me to make a video on hiv life cycle after watching my hbv video and then later someone else asked me to do a video on antiretroviral drugs so i figured out i'm gonna actually talk about the mechanism of action of the antiretroviral drugs in the context of hiv life cycle and so, so that you can understand it better. All right. So like I said in my HBV video, that any virus has the ultimate goal of producing copycat progeny. And so here, the HIV virus would always want to produce uh, in, and would actually use the cell and um, uh, all the cells uh, material for its favor in order to produce copycat progeny and to keep replicating and producing a lot of viruses like itself okay so this is the ultimate goal regardless of whatever goes on inside the cell um, an exact copy of HIV has to be the end product okay so this is something you need to keep in mind all right, so the first step in the life cycle of any virus is attachment or binding. All right, it needs to hold on to the cell or bind to something in the whole cell that allows it to get inside. All right, and each virus actually has tropism or preference for certain types of cells. So HIV likes CD4 positive cells. And by the way, these are not just T lymphocytes. There is CD4 positive macrophages, uh, dendritic cells, okay? So other immune cells are also included under this CD4 uh, or actually have this CD4 receptor. And so HIV will bind any cell that has CD4. So this is the first step in the life cycle of any virus, attachment, all right? And so um, HIV, the HIV variant, uses its GP120 uh, receptor, uh, its GP120 um, protein to bind the CD4 receptor on uh, the host's immune cells. Now, this is not enough for HIV to enter the cell, okay? For HIV to actually um, fuse with the whole cell membrane and allow and actually be allowed into the cell, it needs to bind another co-receptor that is called the chemokine receptor. And that is different from cell to another. So even though T cells have CD4 and macrophages have CD4, but as we shall see later, uh, they don't all have the same chemokine receptor. Okay, so the one on um, the one on macrophages, for example, is called CCR5. Okay, and the one on T cells is CXCR4. I'm gonna discuss this later. And so the chemokine receptors are not the same, but that's not our topic now. Um, my my point is that. The HIV can't get inside the cell if it only binds CD4. It also has to bind the chemokine receptor. And here is where our first drug comes, which is Maraviroc. Maraviroc is a CCR5 inhibitor, which means it inhibits the chemokine receptor. And without this chemokine receptor, HIV can never enter the cell. Remember that. And so, in other words, we can call this drug an, an attachment inhibitor because it essentially prevents HIV from binding in the first place or um, entering the cell, right? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the GP120 is required to bind the CD4 receptor and then um, after that, it's not enough. It has to bind the chemokine co-receptor, which depends whether if it's a T cell, then it's going to be CXCR4. If it's a macrophage, it's CCR5. And so this step is required. It's essential 
for HIV to fuse. Okay, so for these two membranes to fuse, the HIV membrane and the host cell membrane to fuse, they need to, uh, the HIV needs to bind the chemokine co-receptor as well. So GP120 binds the CD4 and the co-receptor. And binding of the co-receptor causes a conformational change in the virus that, that exposes GP41. As you can see here, this yellow GP41 spans the membrane or the envelope, right? And this is a lipid much like this cell. And so it brings them close together to allow fusion, all right? So that Maraviroc actually, if Maraviroc binds the co-receptor, this step will not happen, okay? If Maraviroc inhibits binding to of the HIV to the co-receptor, this, this step will not happen and these membranes will not be approximated together for fusion to occur, right? And so Maraviroc does something. It prevents um, it prevents uh, this step. I wouldn't call it as a fusion inhibitor. I wouldn't call it that. I would call it an attachment inhibitor because it prevents binding of the co-receptor in the first place. However, something that binds GP41 will be called a fusion inhibitor, which is an fuvertide, fu for fusion, okay? This one binds the GP41, so it acts at a later step and therefore prevents fusion. Now, there is something very high yield to know, and I actually saw a UWorld question talking about that, which is what I mentioned earlier, that even though both T lymphocytes and macrophages share CD4 receptors, but they don't share the same chemokine co-receptor. T lymphocytes have CXCR4, but macrophages have CCR5, which is inhibited by Maraviroc, which means that if you administer Maraviroc, it would only be effective against the virus that infects macrophages, but it wouldn't be effective against the virus that infects T lymphocytes. Fortunately, most HIV genotypes infect macrophages. However, there is some genotypes that prefer lymphocytes. And for these, Maraviroc will not work. So this is uh, just a caveat that is high yield. And I thought uh, they might ask about it. I'm not sure. So yeah, this is the first step in HIV life cycle, which is... Um, binding and fusion, all right? You need both. You need CD4 and the chemokine co-receptor. Both need, uh, both are required, are essential for HIV to enter the cell. So if HIV only binds CD4, it wouldn't be able to enter the cell, okay? That's something you need to know. And actually, people who have deletions, uh, deletion mutations in um, CCR5 are resistant against HIV. So even if they do get infected, they're not going to get, um, H they're not going to develop the disease. Now, the second step, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a virus will always want to produce copycat progeny. And so much like HBV, like I mentioned in my other video, HIV is a single-stranded, uh, uh, of course, it's not like HBV in the genome, but I mean in the fact that you want to produce copycat progeny. And so here HIV is a single-stranded positive RNA, and so its daughter virus will also be a single-stranded positive RNA. However, it, you can't jump right away to that, um, uh, or the RNA will first have to be converted into DNA, and then the DNA will then be transcribed to RNA. And all of this will happen inside the whole cell, all right? So um, RNA into DNA by reverse transcription, right? Now, the next step is to uh, use this DNA to make RNA, right? 
So, viral reverse transcriptase uses the viral RNA as a template to make DNA. And this DNA would later be transcribed into the RNA of the daughter virus. Now, there are drugs that inhibit this step. These are called reverse transcriptase inhibitors because they inhibit this step. Now, there is two types of these drugs. There is those that are nucleotide in nature by, being, by acting as false nucleotides, but that have a little bit of a change in their structure. They're going to be incorporated instead of the uh, usual um, cellular nucleotides. Okay, but because they have a little bit of a change, they're going to cause chain termination. And once they get incorporated, it's over. The, um, the replication or um, reverse transcription can't go ahead. Okay, these are called NRTIs, nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They inhibit this step of reverse transcription, hence reverse transcriptase inhibitors, but they are nucleotide in nature by mimicking nucleotides, but with a little bit of a change that doesn't allow the enzyme to continue, therefore they block reverse transcription. And these drugs are abacavir, didanosine, tricitabine, stavidine, zidivudine. All these drugs are NRTIs. There is a lot of them more than the NNRTIs. And another group of drugs that inhibit this same, same step of reverse transcription are non-nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. This is because they do not inhibit the reverse transcription by mimicking nucleotides or by acting as false nucleotides, no. Rather, they bind allosterically to the um, reverse transcriptase enzyme. So, therefore, blocking its action. All right, so this is how it goes. The NNRTIs bind to the reverse transcriptase en enzyme, inhibiting its function. And so blocking the enzyme, they're not acting like nucleotides, they're just blocking the enzyme. And so these are therefore non-nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors, like efavirenz, nivirapine, and delavirudine. So at this point, through reverse transcription, HIV has produced DNA from RNA. Now, this DNA will actually be integrated first into the host DNA before we can transcribe it into RNA. And this is using viral integrase. Now, there are drugs that inhibit this step and are called integrase inhibitors like Graltegravir. And notice here, Tegra for integrase, um, just like fusion inhibitors in fuvertide, all right? And so there are drugs that inhibit this step and it's very high yield to know that they might ask you in a different way that these drugs inhibit replication. And this is true actually, because if you inhibit integration, then you're not allowing the DNA to become RNA of the daughter virus, right? And so you're not allowing progeny to be produced. So it is, in a sense, inhibiting replication. But this is kind of a trick um, that questions would want to find out if you understand that. All right. So after the virus integrates into the DNA, it's going to use the host cells, RNAs, polymerases to make RNA of the daughter progeny. All right, and uh, this RNA will then be used to make proteins by translation, uh, but the polyproteins are non-functional if they're so big and piled up, and therefore they need to be broken down by proteases. And 
uh, they need to be broken down to become functional. If they stay as they are, they're non-functional. And so they're going to be assembled into immature viruses that can't infect cells. And that's exactly what protease inhibitors do. They inhibit this protease so that whatever is assembled is a non-functional polyprotein that can't do anything. They're just immature. And notice that protease inhibitors end with Navir. Uh, everything ends with Navir, so I think it's easy for you uh, to memorize that. So finally, taking this in the context of the life cycle, as UWorld does. I actually brought this picture from UWorld. So the first thing that I need you to understand is that the virus that's coming in would want an exact virus coming out, okay? The virus coming in has to equal that coming out. That's the essentially the goal of any virus, okay? So there is binding uh, with CD4 and CCR5, and there is a Mareviroc, which is a CCR5 inhibitor, and there is fusion, and there are fusion inhibitors in Fuvertide, which bind the GP41, after binding and fusion, that's to allow the core of the virus to enter the cell. The core, which is the genome and the viral enzymes, the RNA will then be reverse transcribed into DNA. And there are a lot of inhibitors to this step. And then it's reverse transcribed to DNA in order to be able to integrate and produce progeny or replication. And there are integrase inhibitors that also inhibit replication. This is another word for that. And after we do use the viral, the, the host machinery to transcribe DNA into RNA, we're going to use this RNA to translate into proteins. And these polyproteins are uh, immature, so we need protease and proteases to break them down. And there is protease inhibitors for that. After that, we have functional proteins that can be assembled alongside the genome, single-stranded positive RNA, into the daughter virus. Okay, I hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment what you think.